Hello guys, hope you are learning new cool things every day. So we are back with another tutorial that is how to access or connect with AWS RDS MySQL using Lambda function. For this, I have created a blog post how to use AWS Lambda function with AWS RDS MySQL. So you can uh, go through this post and I have already created a piece of code that would be used to insert data in MySQL RDS and uh, you can again fetch data from AWS RDS instance and use it anywhere or you can uh, uh, give it back to the uh, using API call you can give the response you can give the data in response so uh, you can get the repository from github and uh, you need to create a database instance then uh, you need to fill all the details of database instance like username passwords and all in this uh, python script so here are the credential host name name password and db name so you need to fill out all these and uh, you need to make sure that all security group settings are in place so let's go ahead and create the rds instance i'll be using mysql here uh, you can click on only enable option for RDS PDA usage. Click on next. You can choose the MySQL version, but uh, I recommend you to go through known issues and limitation for the version if you are using on production. We'll be using a micro instance with 20 GB disk space. Let's give it the name AppChip master username also happy chip and password is also happy chip password click on next You can choose or create a new VPC but for the sake of simplicity I will be using a default VPC and a default subnet. I will have this publicly accessible because I will be connecting through shell and uh, just to keep it simple I will be making it publicly accessible. Although you can you should make it uh, you should not make it publicly accessible uh, you should have proper security groups but as of now let's go ahead with publicly accessible can choose availability zone if you want and we will be selecting an existing VPC uh, existing security group which is default one now database name is apichip and uh, database port is 3306 we are not we are going to keep all the details as it is we are not going to have backup monitoring and logs if you want you can enable these loggings okay next go ahead and launch the db instance okay the instance is getting created you can see the status here it's creating okay so meanwhile it is getting created let's go ahead and uh, uh, create a lambda function click on create lambda function will be authoring it from scratch name it lambda rds or anything you want choose python 2.7 choose an existing role uh, lambda basic execution so uh, you can create a new role as well and uh, put all the policies like uh, accessing to RDS or accessing to DynamoDB or uh, or whichever service your lambda function access uh, you, can, uh, you can attach those policies and then choose that role but as of now we won't be needing much thing we just need basic execution things so I'm choosing ba uh, lambda basic execution role and create function So it gives by default template uh, to add it on but uh, what we are going to do is we are going to upload a zip file because to connect to MySQL instance we will be using PyMySQL library. 
so uh, let's go ahead and um, let's see how does it look like uh, but before that let's check the RDS instance so it's still creating okay so here's the piece of code let me walk you through it we are importing PyMySQL library which we need which is present here so we, we need to install it in this directory only and uh, we have specified region and uh, let's go ahead and change this so uh, host is not yet available but uh, we can go ahead and uh, give other details DB name is also epichip so we have created a function save events uh, which is going to insert the data so uh, it is making a connection and it is inserting the data so here in this we are going to have a test table which have ID and name and we are going to insert it and then we are uh, getting data from this table and uh, iterating over the content and just printing out the result and here is the main function which is calling the function save events the event structure look like this so it has id and name so this is how uh, our function look like it is still creating so this is our uh, directory and uh, uh, we already have pymysql you can install pymysql using command pip install pymysql hyphen d dot so what it does is it uh, install this for uh, in this current directory in this working directory of yours so this is how you can install it for this rds uh, i have kept if you check the security group here it is so if you check the security group I have kept the port 3306 open for any everyone so this is allowed from anywhere this is allowed from anywhere because uh, just to demonstrate I'll be or uh, I'll be uh, going into mysql shell from my local to create the table so uh, let's see if it has been created or not not yet it's taking a bit of time so it's almost done it's, it's bagging up So we will be using MySQL shell to create test uh, table. Uh, so MySQL hyphen H is for host. So we haven't got the host here. Let's see if has created it or not. So basically it's the endpoint. Okay, we have got the endpoint. We can go ahead and place it over here. okay we are logged in and uh, we need to put the host name here as well okay okay we are good to go now so let's see what all database are available so it has created a database app picture for us So uh, we will be creating a table, create table test id not null, mm, let's make it auto increment and then uh, name which is varchar. let's make primary key id oops there is uh, 
syntax error let's go ahead and uh, let me copy paste it so that there should not be okay i i put at a i put extra brackets over there no no okay i didn't provide the type of this int that was the issue okay let's see if the table says got created or not yes it is and uh, let's see its structure okay and check if uh, any data is available okay there are there's no data yet let's go ahead so what we need to do is since uh, we have our code here so I'll remove the zip which I created before since we have changed the host name, uh, password and all. So uh, we'll create a zip again with the same name. Okay, we have got this zip and we will upload this on Lambda. Upload a zip file, click on upload. Here it is save it then we will configure a test event so uh, let's let's edit this give it id1 and name happy chip and save it so here's here's our main file oops let's go ahead and wait wait wait, wait. Uh, we need to change the handler as well so it's main dot main since the file uh, name of our file is main and uh, the function is also main save it back and then test it okay so we it has uh, been executed successfully and data has been inserted and it has also uh, given back the data it has created an entry with id1 and name apichip let's go and see if the data is there or not so select star form test table and here it is let's go ahead and put one more data make it id2 and name aws save and then test so it has created one more entry which you can see here as well okay so uh, this is it for this tutorial hope you like it one more thing you can do is you can uh, provide an api endpoint for this lambda function using amazon's api gateway and you can create a scalable architecture so uh, using api gateway you will have an endpoint which triggers lambda function and lambda function in turn talk to your database instances so this is how you can go serverless and uh, you can create a scalable architecture and this kind of architecture i have already explained in a post scalable architecture using api gateway lambda and dynamodb so here i have used dynamodb as the database but you can go with postgresql or mysql or you can host your own uh, database instance as well so this is it hope you liked it so like subscribe to keep us motivated keep learning and keep sharing thanks for watching